Right. So, you know, basically in order to sell this story to my editors and try to make a great, great headline, we looked for the craziest name in the list, and, and the craziest name was Christy Mack, uh, who was the, the wife of John Mack, who at the time was the CEO of Morgan Stanley. And uh, she was involved with a company called uh, Waterfall Talf Opportunity, her and another woman named Susan Carson. They created the company. They, uh, apparently, yes. Yeah, they, they were the principal investors in this company. And they got $220 million uh, from the Fed. Uh, to invest in student loans and commercial mortgages. Just so, I, just so this is clear, the wife of the CEO of Morgan Stanley got 200 plus million dollars of our tax dollars to buy up paper. Right. Had she, had she been in business before? Not that I could, was able to ascertain. She, she wasn't yeah. a Wall Street type, she was just the wife of the CEO. Exactly, exactly. And 200 so million. 200 million dollars. And of course, and they did it, and with the, the TALF was set up in a very unique way. Uh, basically what they did is they were trying to spur consumer lending. So they gave people these millions of dollars and they said, go out and buy student loans and commercial mortgages and credit cards and whatever else it is you want to buy. Give them to us. If it goes up in value, you take them back and you cash them in. If they go down in value, you leave them with us okay. and the taxpayer will eat the loss. If, if, well, let me translate that a little bit. It means the taxpayer is the sucker and the person getting the money wins all the time. Right. Because if it goes up, they keep it, and if it goes bad, they give the junk back to us. Exactly. This is the old heads I win, tails you lose that we exactly. all learned was, you know, not fair in first grade. Exactly. Now so this is the they, deal they cut with her. They had to. They did have to pay a slight premium on these securities, so less than 10%, so they did have a little bit of skin in the game. But that's it. But that's it. That's and these it. loans are non recourse what lawyers call non-recourse loans, so they literally just walk away. Right. So you, buy the, you go out and you buy the stuff, you dump it on the Fed's books, if it goes up, you take it back. If it goes down, you leave it on the... I want that deal. Where do we sign yeah, up? Yeah, that, that's what Bernie Sanders said to Brent Bernanke. He's like, where's the 900 number so that I yeah, can call yeah, up yeah. And, 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 and... And so, but the wife of the CEO of Morgan Stanley knew enough to go get 200 million. I mean, that's not small change. Right, right. But, but here's what I also got to understand. This is how they're going to get people to lend more money? Right. It didn't work. Well, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's arguable that, I mean, they're, they're going to contend that, of course, the credit markets were frozen at the end of 2008, and they were unfrozen. But how surprising is that? They threw, you know, 80, 90 billion dollars at the problem. But they could also have done it a different way, which is if you want to work off the mortgage situation, which as, you know, Edie was just saying in our last segment, we clearly haven't done, actually get the banks to work on reforming the mortgages sure. rather than just cycling the money back and forth between bankers. Sure, yeah, they, they, they basically, this was basically a giant government lending program that they allowed these millionaires and billionaires to act as middlemen and get gigantic risk-free commissions for doling out these government loans. And they didn't attach any conditions. They didn't say, you know, here, credit cards from now on can't be higher than 15 percent, or these, these student loans have to be lower in, in cost. Now, now, there was another element to what sort of tumbled out when, as you said, you had to pound down the walls of the Fed to get them to disclose who they'd been lending to. Give us some other examples, like foreign banks that are kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah, there were, all, there were, there were a number of foreign banks. There was the Bank of Bavaria, the Central Bank of Mexico got almost $10 billion. Then there was a company called ABC, the Arab Banking Corporation of Bahrain, which is now 59 percent owned by the Central Bank of Libya which for some reason got $35 billion from the Fed that nobody Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. That's the same folks we said we're sending drones over to bomb them, right? Exactly. exactly. I hope we got our money back before we dropped the drones. I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. What, what gives? What are we doing giving money to this Bahrain bank that's owned by the Libyan government? We, there's, there has not been an explanation yet that I've been able to figure out, but they, they've been giving money to everybody. They were giving money, even as we were bailing out GM and Chrysler, we were giving billions of dollars, the Fed was giving billions of dollars to, to uh, Volkswagen, Toyota, Mitsubishi, all these foreign car companies. Look, look, I have been very consistent all through this, saying we needed to do something to get solvency back into the financial system. Mm. The problem is the one you put your finger on just a moment ago. You said there were no strings attached. Right. There was nothing in terms of clawbacks, of crazy bonuses. There was nothing in terms of beginning to lend, nothing in terms of reforming mortgages. It wasn't the fact that we bailed them out that was the crime. It's the fact they didn't negotiate with the banks to get anything back for the taxpayers. Right, right. And, and also, you have to remember that the banks were getting them all this money at very much below market rates, and yet right. the, the money that ended up in the system was all at market rates. So this is so, essentially... So, so some of the banks could take the federal money that was a basically zero interest that the banks were paying, buy T-bills, right. risk-free, at about 3%, make money on that spread, and, and to get... It's free you know, money. Just make, make money free. Now, look, there is an argument that this is how we got solvency back into the banking sure. system. We needed to do that. Sure. But, what an, but it's, uh, it, what an extraordinary coincidence that it always seems to work out that the solution to, to all of our economic problems involves giving risk-free millions of dollars to the same people who caused the, the financial crisis. All right, crisis. we've got only 20